Podcast, fellow classic TV fans, and welcome to Retro TV Trivia. I'm your host, Pat McCormack. On today's show, we are joined by the legendary actress, Ruta Lee. The question with this talented woman is not simply what has she done, but more like what hasn't she done? Ruta is the epitome of glamour and has been a heartthrob for decades. I affectionately refer to her as the First Lady of Hollywood, which she had mixed feelings about. I suppose the Queen of Hollywood might be just as fitting. We talk all about her illustrious career and her amazing experiences, both on and off the set. Her beliefs and opinions run deep, as does her dedication to her philanthropic work as a crusader for mental health. But I'll let this actress with over 2,000 appearances on classic TV alone, not to mention many on the big screen, tell you all about it. Enjoy! Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podcast, the amazing first lady of Hollywood, Ruta Lee. Wow, what an introduction. Woo, first lady. Makes me sound ancient, which I am. But nevertheless, thank you. That was beautiful. And I'm so happy and proud to be with you and your listeners. Oh, thank you so much, dear. Well, my kids said, Dad, who are you interviewing today? And I said... Um, Hollywood. (laughs) (laughs) In many ways, I'm the only one left alive that knew everybody. Uh, I, I just love, I love being somebody that is referred to as an icon anymore because it just, it sort of makes you feel like, gosh, I had a career that kept me in business and kept me fed and housed and, and (laughs) well-dressed Uh, and all of that, I've been very, very blessed in so many ways. And um, to be thought of as kind of an icon in the business is not only flattering, uh, but it's most gratifying. And I, uh, I thank my maker and I thank the lovely children he put on this earth that gave a damn about my career and turned on a television set if I was on or radio if I was on or went to the movies or came to the theater to see me. Uh, it's my wonderful opportunity to say thank you, you dear, dear, wonderful, loving friends that have been with me all these years. Oh, well, yes, we do love you. As a matter of fact, I have to admit, I've had a crush on you for as long as I can remember. Uh, oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Do you remember Do you remember what the first things were you saw me on that made you think, ooh, ooh hello? Yes. I, it had to be the Andy Griffith show. When oh, yes. You were that evil college student trying to bring Andy down, and I didn't care. I was in love. <laughs> <laughs> what a lovely thing to say. Thank you. Well, you know, I did several of the, the Andy Griffith shows, and then later when it became Mayberry or whatever they called it, I don't remember. Um, but I, I had so much fun. Uh, of course, I had fun on everything I ever did. But I, I really loved working with Andy um, because he had this very – Wonderful, homey sense of humor that carried through on everything that he said and did. And between takes, he'd pick up his guitar or his banjo and strum some stuff and sing kind of body songs. Uh, and, and I just thought that was absolutely sensational. The mistake that I made was not to curry favor with little Opie, because what the hell? He's the hottest uh, director, producer in Hollywood now, and the SOB hasn't hired me once. All right, letter writing campaign to begin now, folks. Okay, we'll get his address. And <laughs> I mean, I think part of the reason that I was so taken was that you just, you have that innocent beauty, but it's a constant state of smile. And I just, I love that. When I see you, I'm happy because you always look happy. What a lovely thing to say. Do you know that... I- Someone once asked me what I would like engraved on my headstone. And I said, there's only one way to get it, and that's with a smile. And I said, I'd like to think that I brought a smile to every creature God put on this earth, whether he's two-legged or four-legged or crawling. 
um, that if it's just nice to think that I brought a little smile to someone's day. And uh, thanks for saying that. It's very important to me. I love it. Well, it's true because it just seems so effortless. I mean, you, you were born with a smile on your face. That's all there is to it. I think so. <laughs> it served you. It served us. And what, what an amazing career. A long one. You know, it's been very long. Let's face it. I am now 87 years old. And yes, thank you. I, I am blessed with great genes and I don't look 87, but um, and nor do I act 87. You know, I'm, I'm still dancing the light fantastic and doing shows and whatever it takes. Uh, but it's it's been a long and wonderful career. I never have reached above the title except in theater you know all the theaters that i played would say ruda lee now appearing as hello dolly or or mame or annie get your gun or something but um i never reached superstardom of any kind but i i am blessed that i had a long career that has kept me in business and as i say kept me fed for a lot of years and um so i it's Awfully nice to think that I have been an integral part of show business and got to know some of the really fabulous great names that will go down in history. Oh. And uh, it's it's kind of nice to know that I shared uh, either a, a smile or a drink or, or a scene on stage or off or on a, on a movie sound stage. Uh, awfully nice to know that I know all those people or knew them, I should say. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm on page 176, I believe. Let me, yeah. 176 of Consider Your Ass Kissed. <laughs> Isn't that a great title? I have to explain that it's an expression, Pat, that I've used for a lot of years. You know, I have been in fundraising. Uh, through the Thalians, yes. which is the premier Hollywood group for mental health. It's it's Hollywood for mental health. And, um, you know, for many, many years, mental health and or mental illness has been a closet disease that, that got hidden in a dark hole. Nobody in the family wanted to talk about anybody in the family that was ill with mental problems. And um, we, uh, with the group that was started by Debbie Reynolds and Hugh O'Brien and some wonderful people, Margaret Whiting, uh, founded this organization called the Thalians. Uh, Because Thalia was the goddess of comedy, and uh, she also took care of stray lambs, which seemed very appropriate for a group of young Hollywood people that got tired of being called hard-drinking, pot-smoking, sex-minded asses that had nothing to contribute and said, let's, uh, let, let's we get together to hang around the piano and sing and have a few drinks. Why don't we put something together, sell tickets, and raise some money for a worthwhile charity? And so they sent out um, darling Jane Mansfield and um, Mamie Van Doren, the queens of the brassiere size, and uh, and they came back saying, well, all the good diseases have been taken, but, but they found a guy, a wonderful doctor that was dealing with emotionally disturbed children, which he described as having a rotten apple in a barrel when you have a child like that. It will infect the whole barrel, the whole community, unless you do something about it. So... That's what we did for a lot of years, and after 18 years of raising funds and millions of dollars, we built the Thalians Community Health Center that dealt with mental health from pediatric through geriatrics, not only in care but in research. And then, about 10 years ago, a friend came to me and said, you know, you, you people are missing the boat. You're doing beautifully with the Thalians, but how about focusing on something that is really sorely neglected? And that's our returning veterans and their mental health. And so we switched our focus, and we are now totally involved with raising funds for 
Operation Mend at UCLA. And Op Mend heals the broken and fractured bodies of our returning veterans. And we try to take care of the broken and fractured mind and spirit. And isn't it sad that we send these beautiful young people to every hellhole in the world where there is a conflict that we're involved in. And then they come back sometimes, and instead of getting the best that America has to offer, they somehow fall through the cracks. So we're doing something about that. So I invite any one of your listeners, if they have an extra dollar or five dollars or five hundred thousand dollars, to please go to the Thalians, T H A L I A N S dot org, not com, but org, and you can read all about us and you can make a contribution. And if you do, please. Not just the title of my book, take it for granted. Consider your ass kissed. <laughs> yes. Well, of course, I could never have put it better. And I really appreciate the fact that you guys are doing this, mainly because in within my family, there had been mental illness. Um, and, of course, it was swept under the rug so much. And I can't even imagine what it was like for the these poor World War II fighters in Vietnam, for that matter, in Korea. That I'm astounded. I'm astounded that they're with us and working and doing. It's just wonderful. And you say mental illness, the disease, is worse than all other diseases combined. Without I, a doubt. Unfortunately, in this day and age, it's proving itself daily. And um, I just... I'm so glad you're holding the light up. I'm so glad that Debbie was such a big part of that because you could just see she was a light um, in and of herself. And She was. She was one of the, the really good people God put on this earth, one of the most generous people I've ever known uh, in every way, you know, spiritually, uh, mentally, physically, and, and financially. She would do for everybody, and she taught me something that I want to share with all your audience Please. and anybody who's in the business of trying to help other people. And that is, she said to me when I was a little hesitant about hitting people up, you know, for whatever, whether it was a, in a market or a jewelry store or whatever for the Thalians, she said, you can ask for anything in this world of anybody in this world as long as it isn't for yourself, <laughs> but for a charity, and how right she was. Right. So I, I don't worry if people cross the street when they see me coming because they know <laughs> I'm going to ask them for money for the Thalians. <laughs> we, we just had our event, by the way, um, uh, just this last Saturday, and uh, we had uh, our honorees. You know, we've honored everybody from... Frank Sinatra, through Lucille Ball, through Whoopi Goldberg, through Liza Minnelli, uh, through Clint Eastwood. And this year, our honorees, and how appropriate that the foremost mental health organization in Hollywood would have as honorees the foremost spokespeople internationally for mental health, and that's Dr. Phil and his wife, Robin. So it was quite a marvelous mental health event that we had at the Hollywood Museum, which was a unique and wonderful place to do an event. Uh, and we called it a night at the museum, and boy, it was, and it was great. Wow, uh, that's wonderful. Well, you know, of course, <clears throat> this podcast's title kind of speaks for itself, Retro TV Trivia. I love to honor all the work that you and your peers have done, you know, in that genre. And, of course, I know there was much more than that for you. You were obviously in movies and stage, you know, stage shows and all of the – well, you just did it all. Um, but I felt like, in a, in a sense, classic television really belonged to gals like you and, and for example, your pal Lucy – Wow, yes. I mean, she was television. Uh, th there was television before her and after her, but nothing like when she was queen of the media, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Well, and, and of course, I know you proved that being on classic television could be a 
considered a full contact sport. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very well put. Well, and, and, you know, and I, I played everything from the thrower to the tight back end and, and every or tight end back or whatever you call them. Um, it goes to show you how much I know about f- football. But, uh, it, I, you know, I was really lucky, Pat. I got to play every kind of role and character that anybody could write. And I was blessed that there were producers, directors, and above all, casting directors. In those days, they really held great sway um, that would hire me uh, to do roles. I wasn't just the cute gal that was bouncy, but I, I played drunken whores. I played uh, hookers of every nature. I, I played sweet mothers. I played... You know, all kinds of people, hearts of golden teeth to match, you know, Um, I I played everything. And what else but television would give me that kind of an opportunity? Right, right. And I, of course, (laughs) that's the thing. You you could do it all. And I know you enjoyed the um, little more. uh, What's the word? Uh, I'm going to say it. Bitchy roles. Uh, Oh, yeah. (laughs) The bad girls were much more fun to play. (laughs) <laughs> um, but even then, as I was saying, full contact. I, so far in the book, you've been knocked out twice. <laughs> oh, 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 yes. <laughs> Something about gun smoke and the way Arnes just kind of lost control there for a second. That was a very sweet moment in my life. Now, do you want me to share that with your audience or should I say buy my book? Okay. And we'll do that too, please. Because, But you know what? There's so much, including the great pictures, that are loaded oh, yeah. into this book. We can, we can get this one away, I think. There, there's a great picture with, with Jim Arness, who is, by the way, a gentle, lovely man. And, and I just adored him. And his brother, Peter, of course, looked so much like my husband, Webb, that I adored him anyway. But um, so I have to tell you that I was playing a scene where I'm a very kittenish vamp and I'm trying to, to lure the, uh, the sheriff, the marshal, I should say, into my bed. And I'm supposedly down the hall from Miss Kitty. They've, she's put me up because I'm in some sort of trouble. And they didn't have a door to this little bedroom that I was in, but a heavy curtain like they used a lot for doors in those days. And the sheriff, as I lure him in to get under my quilt, throws the quilt over my head, throws me over his shoulder, pulls back the curtain with full force, turning to the left as he pulls, hitting my head on the right frame of the door and knocking me out cold. And I went limp and fell down to off his arms into the floor. And I woke up to have big Jim Arness tears pouring down his cheeks, actually smiling through his tears that he hadn't killed me, you know. Mm. <laughs> and I've got to tell you, it's not a bad way to come out of a bad dream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, obviously he felt bad and cared. And, you know, you know, when you're a big guy like that, sometimes you can be a little awkward. And <laughs> Oh, my Lord. Well, he was, what, 6'6 six, six or something. I wonder how many of your listeners know that he was that thing, the big carrot in in the thing, which was one of the best sci-fi movies I think I've ever seen. Oh yeah, yeah, and he didn't even have any lines, and he was great. But you know, no, was, all he did, had to move like a a, a vegetable, <laughs> <laughs> a big scary vegetable, might have. Yes, yes, yeah, of course. You know that immortalized him. I'm very much into that uh, genre of film. And <clears throat> speaking of genre. I mean, what was it for you? You you did it all. You know, it was drama, comedy, uh, uh, song and dance. What, what did you feel was your strongest or, or maybe even your most enjoyable genre to play? Well, of course, I love it all. And, and whatever I'm currently doing, I think, is the best, you know. But overall, if you really 
ask me about my favorite thing, I think it would be live on stage uh, doing a musical. Um, there is nothing, especially a musical comedy, uh, because the greatest sound in the world to me is the sound of laughter. Right. And to hear an audience look out and see a smile is one thing, but to hear an audience roar with laughter and delight at something that is going on on stage and know that you're a part of it is the most wonderful and fulfilling experience that that as a performer you can have mm -hmm. and then to get a check at the end of the week <laughs> is even even greater it's it's the exclamation point at the end you know yeah it's it's just wonderful and of course to hear i don't care what kind of frame of mood or mind you're in when you hear that overture and you know you're on in just a minute you know it's it's like a vitamin shot in your ass. It's absolutely fabulous. It's the best B12 in the world. <laughs> and I, I just wish that everybody who's not in show business could experience that at least once, you know, to, to know what it is to to be performing and to hear laughter and to hear applause. And if there's a standing ovation, wow, <laughs> that's the crown. Oh, you know? sure. The nightcap, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, there's been moments with you on live television that go down in history, and especially I'm reading this book, and I, I just start laughing out loud, you know. I'm so glad. Thank you. And my wife's like, well, okay, what's, what's the funny? What's the funny? <laughs> I said, well, you see, it goes like this. Earlier in the book, she was talking about Sinatra, and then later in the book, she was, uh, she was on... <laughs> She was on with Carson, and somehow the subject came up, and I, I, you know, honey, I can't put my finger on it, but it was really funny. <laughs> oh, boy. That's my darling Art Linkletter, you know, that our youngsters will not know who he was, but he was hosting the show that night on Carson. Right. Uh, and, and he said, uh, you know, I was... His question of me was, Rudy, you've just uh, been the leading lady to Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis, Peter Lawford, Joey Bishop, and the Crosby Boys, et cetera, et cetera. Tell me, Frank Sinatra is world-renowned to be, you know, the a real ladies' man and such a heartthrob. What is it about him that is so attractive? And I said, well, Art, I can't put my finger on it just now. And the audience started to laugh. And laugh and laugh some more. And he said, don't put your finger on it. Just tell us about it. <laughs> well, the audience went into a five-minute laugh. And, of course, we, we almost had to cut tape, but we didn't. And so they went to a live commercial. And it was Hugh Downs doing the commercial. And he said, oh, I don't know if I can do this. It's for the Hammond Organ <laughs> Company. <laughs> So, <laughs> think, think, you can imagine that when you're on air and you don't know whether to laugh or pee your pants, you know, it's one of those things. Well, <laughs> it goes to show that Frank had exposed his huge talent <laughs> to many people. <laughs> Would you put your finger right on it, my darling Pat? <laughs> Oh, well, I hope our audience will forgive us. <laughs> they will. As a matter of fact, they're eating it up, I guarantee. <laughs> oh, man. Well, as you read on and, you know, shortly before or after, you, there's that other appearance on, and this time with Johnny Carson. And this took place right after uh, Ruta liberated the country of Lithuania. And oh, wow. I was so touched by that. It was, of course, uh, uh, you know, I won't go into the the 12 years of trying to get my grandmother out of Siberia. My grandfather's legs were frozen on the cattle car that they were being deported on to Siberia. And I have always saluted the Jewish communities all around this world because they never let us forget what happened, whether it's in book or television or movie form or or art or music, we do not forget what happened when those people were 
sent out of Germany or to wherever they were being sent in their cattle cars to gas chambers. In this case, it wasn't to gas chambers. It was to all kinds of mines and forests in Siberia. And, you know, somehow we Christians uh, do not make an issue of never mind the 6 million Jews, of the 30 million Jews, Catholics, Protestants, anybody of faith that were destroyed by the communist regime with its original leader, Stalin. And my grandfather's legs were frozen, and when they took them off at one of the way stations where they stopped, and not only did the boots come off, the flesh came off with them. You know, gangrene had set in and he died. And my poor little grandmother, I don't know, probably around 90 years of age, maybe not 90 when she was first there, well into her 80s, uh, survived all those years in Siberia. And I tried for 12 years to get her out and could not do so. And then finally, I was given permission to come to the Soviet Union, where nobody was permitted to go unless you were a very high-ranking official of the Communist Party. All those satellite countries like you know the Baltics, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, uh, nobody visited there. And uh, I was miraculously given permission to come when I did the impossible that I will talk about in the book of, of doing cr something crazy, <laughs> like picking up the phone and calling Khrushchev, you yeah, know, right. And, and somehow craziness happened. God was working for me and I got permission to get, to go to Lithuania and to then six months later, go back to get her and bring her home to the United States. And when she got off the plane pad, because we didn't have jetways then, and she dropped to her knees on the ground and kissed the tarmac and said, Allo America, Achudieve, which is thank you, God. And I stop and think of how we have so much criticism of this magnificent country that we were lucky to be either born in or adopted by. And and we criticize this country instead of singing its praises. I just want those people to wake the frap up and, mm -hmm. and realize what's going to happen if they allow socialism to take over, which is what we're aiming for. Yeah. And that's the first step to communism. And that's that's living in hell. Right. Right. And it's great that you bring us back to that because, of course, for the time, everything kind of gets, uh, it wasn't so bad. Or, and, of course, right now it couldn't be worse. But Oh, it reads well on print and in print and on paper. It reads really well. Oh, it's, it's awful. Yeah, it's, it's an awful way to live. Just ask anybody that lived under communism. Right. Well, and obviously you got her out, and that's the beauty of it. And she blessed America by kissing the ground probably better than the Pope could. I <laughs> I think so, with with pr probably more uh, love love in her heart, you know, for something that she'd heard about all her life. Right. Well. I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to put us on a sad note. <laughs> well, that's what's so great about the book, Ruta, is that you you really cover the bases. And I mean, we get, we get to get into your life. And Well, you know, what I'm planning, Pat, is that I, I gave the story of my grandmother and Lithuania and Siberia and everything else, uh, what I consider short shrift, you know, I gave her a chapter, um, which was an important chapter in my life, but I now would like to dedicate a whole book to her because I think it would make one hell of a screenplay. Uh, not that I can do it, but I can do the book and that's going to be my next effort. Uh, my first book took only about 10 years for me to do. <laughs> so I'm going to try and do this one in a slightly shorter period. Yeah. Well, you blazed a trail. And so now just, this is a spinoff more or less. There you go. A spinoff. Yeah, it would be. You're right. Well, that's great. I, you know, back into the more humorous aspect, you had that, that wit, that charm, which would be just perfect for game shows. And uh, folks, this book is worth 
its weight in gold and has so many wonderful stories like that uh, throughout it. And I was getting to the game show thing, and I was noticing there was this one story where you were on the Hollywood Squares and you lost your ring. Oh, yeah, I did. And and girls, whoever is listening out of you, don't do anything stupid like I even to this day sometimes continue to do. Uh, I was at the lovely NBC studios and uh, changed my ring because it, the color wasn't right for the next outfit that I was wearing. Uh, it was on Hollywood Squares. And, um, you know, we would shoot three and then break for dinner and then shoot three more, which was lovely because it was all done in one, you know, one afternoon and evening. And uh, I uh, was tidying up my dressing room uh, to leave that night. And I had put my beautiful emerald ring in some tissue so that it wouldn't scratch and, of course, left it on the dressing table. And when it came time to clean up, I threw it out along with all the other tissues that were on the table. And uh, so I just want all the girls to know, don't do that. <laughs> don't put it in tissue because it's too easy to throw out. Yeah. And, of course, we never found it again. Which put the question in my head, gee, I wonder what it was worth. Yeah, that, that maybe was something you don't even want to say. No, uh, I, 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 Well, you know, it was worth a lot to me. Let's yeah. put it that way. Maybe to Zsa, Zsa Gabor, it wouldn't have been that much. <laughs> but uh, but to me, it was worth a lot. And, and I hated to lose it. First of all, because it was emerald and that's my birthstone. Mm. I'm a May baby. So um, it was very nice. But hey, it uh, it came and it went. And whoever got it, I, I hope uh, I hope it uh, served them some good. Right. Uh, who hasn't had something like that happen? And and yet I would be thinking, oh, that one probably hurt, and uh, which makes me question why I even brought it up. You know, we could easily we could easily talk about the chandelier falling on your head or something. You know. <laughs> oh well, that's happened too. <laughs> Speaking of knockouts. <laughs> oh man. Oh yes, on Hollywood. No, it wasn't Hollywood Squares. It was uh, high rollers. High rollers. Yeah. yeah. Well, by the way, uh, I, I'd love for your audience to know that God rest his soul. My darling Alex Trebek did the foreword for my book. And um, there's a darling picture of the two of us on the on like the first or second page. But he's also on the back cover of my book. And he was my dear, dear friend. And uh, I saw him just a few days before he went to meet his maker, uh, like four or five days before. We were um, at dinner at his former wife's house. Wife number one, Elaine, had a dinner party, she and her husband, for Alex and myself and Alex's beautiful wife, Jean, who is a truly a living angel. She's not only beautiful on the outside, she's even more gorgeous on the outside, on the inside. And um, how nice to know that our laughter was some of the last things that he would have in his life. And we shared great laughs once again. Oh. And Alex was truly one of the funniest men innately that I have ever known. And yet he, on, on, on the shows that we always did, he was always kind of dry and uh, droll, you know, just wonderful. Yeah. Well, it was clear he loved you. And of course, reading the book and, and seeing all your work, you can see why. And, and boy, what a battle that he waged. It was such inspiration yes. for so many that, you know, he went out a hero. Yes. And I, I don't think he ever expected that, but he became one. He, he was learning as he was leaving, you know, isn't that interesting? Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm, I'm so glad that he did. And of course his, his wife is so glad. And um, I, I've been in touch with her and um, we were making a date for as soon as I get back. I'm going on a Christmas cruise um, for the holidays uh, to the Danube, where which is going to be wonderful. I've done it once before, and, and it was the best cruise I ever did in my life. And I've done maybe 20 cruises, and I love cruising. 
I love unpacking once and and seeing things from a different perspective, you know. And the Danube is wonderful because, especially at Christmas time, because you step off the boat, you walk a hundred feet, and you're in the town square, which is all decked out for the holidays. And the nicest part is, no matter how cold it is, you don't give a damn because you're drinking hot mulled wine, which is served every other stall in the Christmas market. Awesome. And and it's warming and gratifying and and beautifying. It's just a gorgeous place to be for the Christmas holidays. So we'll be at St. Stephen's in Vienna for Christmas Mass. And that is so gorgeous. I don't care of what religious persuasion you are. Uh, Christmas time in the big cathedral at St. Stephen's with the music and the beauty and everything is overwhelming. Well, that's fantastic. I wish you a very, very pleasant trip. Sounds like it's going to be. Oh, yes, I'm planning on it. (laughs) And I so look forward. Now, listen, how are we going to arrange to meet in person? And please, we will invite your wife to come along, whether she's read my book or not. Oh, well, you know, we have mutual friends, uh, Jerry and Teresa Mathers. Yes, yes, of course. Are they the dearest couple? Oh. Absolutely. I told them I was interviewing you, and they both just went, oh, you're going to love that. <laughs> well, they were at our event. They were at our wonderful event that we had with Dr. Phil and Robin. Oh, yeah. Well, see, again, they're they're out there and moving and shaking, and it's just been a wonderful friendship that that's built. And again, it's, so that's how we'll meet. I'll come down. We'll, we'll hang with the Mathers. We'll go to dinner, and we'll go that to the Hollywood be show, and we'll go to the app. Absolutely <laughs> delightful. That would be Totally delightful. Yes, uh, you know, uh, uh, my Donnell Dadigan is going on this cruise with me, which is rather wonderful. Uh-huh. And and uh, uh, when I say Donnell Dadigan for your audience, she is the owner and the absolutely magnanimous with time and money to charitable causes with the wonderful Hollywood Museum, which is a real treasure and a gift to Los Angeles and the entire community <clears throat> because it's a true Hollywood asset to yes. be able to go in and just revel in in the history of Hollywood and she's got it all and it's right there and you just you should plan on going and spending the day and then what's really wonderful is that the Thalians have been given by this wonderful Donnell Dadigan the space between Mel's Diner and the museum for the Hollywood legendary stuff that we have to sell. We have a gift shop that is one of a kind where stars have donated all kinds of memorabilia and things. I mean, there's there's stuff from Star Wars that came from my darling Debbie and her daughter. And and I just, I, I can't rave enough about this gorgeous place. So um, anyway, your audience should come, buy a ticket for the museum. It's very inexpensive. Spend part of the day there. Go into Mel's, have their great food, their comfort foods, and then take a little time in our gift shop, too. Maybe for Christmas or anniversaries or birthdays or anything, one-of-a-kind things that you will only find there. And I'm not talking about the usual garbage we find in souvenir shops. Right. And I don't mean as garbage, but the, the stuff everybody has. This is what nobody has. And this benefits the Thalians, correct? Exactly. Every penny goes to taking care of the mental health of our returning veterans. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, there you have it. On that note, I think I'll just let you get on with your day, Ruta, and I want to thank you so much for for joining me. And yes, you should definitely have been Ginger Grant in my book. Uh, I just had to throw that in there. You know, that is fabulous, and I thank you so very, very much for the time you've given me with your audience. And may I simply wish everybody the most wonderful healthful, beauty-filled 2023. It's got to be better than 21 and 22. Yes. Here, here. Well, you beat me to the punch because I was just going to wish you the same, but we'll just say right back at you, Rudalee. <laughs> Very good. And, and God 
listen to us and smile on us and above all smile on america absolutely there you have it another retro tv trivia in the books check out rudalee.com to learn more about this colorful and humorous living legend I'll leave the links for Ruta, the Thalians, and some great video tributes to this wonderful lady in my description. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this podcast and give me a positive rating and review. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at Golden Rage of TV, and on Twitter at Golden Rage of TV One. This is your host, Pat McCormick, and thanks for listening to Retro TV Trivia.